This is probably the worst shotgun I've ever used in my life. Wow, how did people ever think Weaponsmith was a good mod? Sub dudes, it's Snail. Now, if you've been watching a while, you know that one of my favorite mods is a good weapon mod. Why? I don't like the vanilla weapons in Fallout 4. I like modern weapons in my Fallout games. Why not? It's fun. So, the mod in question that I had a horrible experience with was the many downloaded and much endorsed Weaponsmith Extended 2. I always knew about Weaponsmith Extended 2, and I always thought to myself, wow, that's cool, you get an entire pack of like brand new weapons and animations and, and from different modders and whatnot. Yeah, so here's the thing. The mod itself isn't actually a mod. To explain that point a little bit better, I have to go through how the installation process for Weaponsmith Extended 2 actually works. The process of installing it I found to be really, really tedious, to the point where I almost just didn't bother. But after reading some of the posts on the mod page and seeing all the praise it was getting, I opted to just bite the bullet and at least give it a shot. So step one of installing. You have to install all the required frameworks for this weapon mod. And I literally never used these mods once I was done with Weaponsmith. Like, I, I just removed them. Next, you have to install the Weaponsmith Extended V2 plugin and one of the INI files, depending on whether or not you're using unique NPCs. Step 3 is to download the bundled asset pack and all of the weapon mods under the heading in the description page. This is them, by the way, these are all the weapons. The Weaponsmith Extended 2 zip that you download from the Nexus Mods page is incomplete. You need all the other weapon dependencies that are listed in the page for it to run perfectly. But you have to download them manually, so you can't even install them with Vortex, and we'll get to why. Next, you have to extract all of the archives, every single mod archive. Then you're gonna use a program called archive2.exe which you can find in the creation kit for Fallout 4 and what archive2.exe does is it compiles assets into what's known as a BA2 file and the BA2 file is basically like a readable zip for the game but it can be very daunting to actually use archive2 if you've never used it before. Now thankfully for the uninitiated there is a video on the Weaponsmith Extended mod page that explains how to use Archive 2 for this purpose. Oh my god, it's an hour long. The author decided to not edit the tutorial video at all and leave it all one take. It's an hour long with no chapters. This whole process should take you at least an hour. So let's argue that you watch maybe 20 minutes of this install tutorial video and you're looking at about 40 minutes of time already invested into this and you haven't even begun the steps yet. An extremely tedious setup that involves doing things that most people will probably not even bother with, but those that do will also find themselves sorely disappointed by bad textures, awful reload animations. Generally speaking, Weaponsmith Extended also rebalances damage, but it rebalances the weapons in the packs to have the exact same kind of bullet sponge damage output that most of the vanilla weapons have, and that is exactly why I use weapon mods. I use weapon mods to avoid the bullet sponges. And on top of that, if you end up missing something during the archive packing, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure you'd have to start all the way over, which is obviously something I don't want to do. And I won't even do it to fix the crash to desktop that I'm experiencing right now when I try to load the mod up and play with it. And keep in mind, the mod author has not forgotten about Weaponsmith Extended 2. It was last updated on the 2nd of April, 2020. That is fairly recent considering that it was originally uploaded in 2016. And like, like, I get it, right? Th this mod list was what we could do with the best we had at the time. But in today's day and age of weapon modding and Call of Duty ports and rebalanced damage and horizons and frost simulators, it simply doesn't have a place anymore in just about anyone's load order. So instead of Weaponsmith Extended 2, I have two alternatives for you. One of them is Combined Arms. Combined Arms is a project a lot like Weaponsmith Extended, except it's all done by one team. It's not a piecemeal collection of different weapon mods from all across Nexus. Instead, they're all made by the same people. So you can expect a certain level of consistency in both the animations as well as the ammo. Oh my god, I prefer this to seeing to seeing what loads of ammunition does to a game. Holy shit. All of the weapons also come with the ability to balance them on your own. Do you want something that's a real problem solver and 
blows enemies away? Yeah, you can do that. Do you want to be balanced closer to what vanilla Fallout 4 feels like? Then yeah, you can do that as well. Overall, the textures look amazing, the guns all handle pretty well, there are only a couple I don't really like, and a couple that I would happily swap out for something different. Here's a short clip of me using some of the combined arms weapons to deal with easy city downs. So combined arms is great, don't get me wrong, but if you're like me and you like using screen archer menu to take photos and stuff like I do with a lot of my thumbnails, then you'll find that combined arms conflicts with some skeletons, namely it conflicts with Zack's skeleton. So another fantastic alternative to this is to download individual weapon mods instead. There's literally a new weapon mod every day in 2024, and there's dozens of iterations on classic weapons like the M1911 or the AK-47 or the M4. There's even direct Call of Duty ports from the newer games, which honestly I find are some of the highest quality weapon mods available for Fallout right now. Here's an example. So, I was told by the settlers at Nordhagen Beach that Taffington Boathouse might be a good spot for some people to post their asses up for the night. So I decided to take my female Punisher Megan character, along with her battle bus, and we parked not too far from Taffington, went ahead and we cleared the location of bugs. In closing, I'd like to say this. Whenever you're looking at a mod and you're looking for something, say weapons, for example, don't go automatically with whatever's endorsed or been around the longest. Go with something that you think looks good. Look for video tutorials or showcases that showcase the weapon being used, that showcase what it's like to install it, that showcase what it's like to craft and play with it. Read the post section in every mod you look at to figure out if there are any bugs that would be a deal breaker for you. And one last final thing. I know I've been ragging on Weaponsmith Extended 2, but I should just put this out there. Don't take to Nexus to tell this guy that his mod sucks, because he doesn't deserve that. What he made was great for the time that it existed in and the time it was released, but it is just no longer relevant. There are just better options these days. Remember, modders don't get paid. They're volunteers. 